So this is uh, benzene. We're going to start here, and if we're following along, this is in Bruce chapter 18. And it's the start of a new series of things that react for us. So benzene was known to have six carbons and six hydrogens. Its exact structure was not necessarily known. So um, eventually, uh, Faraday was one of the people who ended up isolating it. And then other chemists ended up working on its getting its actual structure when it was found to have a series of alternating double bonds. And so when we draw this, we typically draw it to look like this. And this would have the formula C6H6. The thing that we need to know about this is that every carbon is sp2 hybridized. And uh, that is more or less just kind of what benzene is. Now it's it's in a lot of different things. It's a very stable arrangement of carbon atoms. So we're going to end up seeing it a lot, and you already have. Um, so how do we call it? What's the nomenclature for this? Well, if it's monosubstituted, that means there's just one thing on there. We just name the thing that's on there. So bromobenzene be a benzene with a bromine on it. And if we had put it here, 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 anywhere else, it, it wouldn't matter. We don't have to say one bromobenzene. If it's the only thing on there, it is one. So nitrobenzene would be this. Mm -hmm. Ethyl benzene Second. would be this. Last. Check mark. Also looks like this. Okay. So, um, you know, it's a very simple thing to go through and name some of these things. Uh, if, however, we have something where we have a certain monosubstituents mono on there, so something like um, um, Talu, toluene, there's a second N there. So, if there is a single methyl group on there, we don't call this methylbenzene, this gets the name toluene. Uh, it's a sort of a common nomenclature for something that we see very commonly. Same thing for uh, phenol. So this would be a phenyl alcohol, and there's an OH, and that gets the common name phenol. And you'll want to sort of, there's really no other way to do it, but to commit these to memory, your book gives you a bunch of these. Aniline looks like this. Anisole ends up having a methoxy. Styrene looks like this. And then benzonitrile ends up looking like this. There are others. Um, we've seen benzoic acid and some other things. But um, these are some common ones that you're going to sort of want to commit to memory. Another thing for us to remember is that if this is going to be a group on another molecule, this is a phenyl group. So if we're attaching you know, this to somewhere, this would be referred to as phenyl. And if we've got this sort of thing that's attached to something else. This is a benzyl and group. Okay. So when we end up um, having alkyl groups that are attached to this, then we, um, we have some kind of benzene here. So the name of the alkyl group is isopropyl. So this would be iso uh, propyl benzene. That would, be, that would be one word. I've sort of left space here, but this would be one word. Um, we have a sec butyl group here. So one, two, three, four carbons is attached to the second one. So this is a sec butyl benzene. Um, we can't say that this is a sec pentyl benzene because uh, there's more than one sec pentyl. And so what we end up saying is that this is a group that's attached to this. So this would be uh, not two. 3 phenyl 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 pentane. And this would be a 2 phenyl pentane. Okay, so when the alkyl group can't be named with a single name, um, such as isopropyl, ethyl, something along those lines, then we end up saying that this phenyl is a group of that alkane. Okay? So uh, in the next video, we'll go over how to name di and poly substituted benzenes.